brothers and sisters, fellow travelers on planet Earth, and welcome to a late edition of the Vegematic Show. I haven't been feeling particularly creative these past couple of weeks, and um, other life concerns kept me away from making a video last week, and uh, my apologies to um, those few people who regularly watch the show, but sometimes it's just hard to focus on what I want to do, and the last thing I want to do is put out crappy videos, because that's unfair to anybody that watches them, so... I try and keep it a little bit more entertaining than the average talking head video. Hopefully I'm succeeding. The shit's about to hit the fan. There, You can barely turn on the television without experiencing the complete and utter chaos and despair that the planet finds itself in, in these terrible, terrible times. Has anybody been watching this character Duterte in the Philippines? Yeah, the, the guy that you know murders people because they might be drug users. Apparently Trump, when he talked to him, said he's doing things the right way. So there's something to look forward to for all you potheads. Oh, what happened this week? Well, this was an interesting experience on YouTube. Of course, have you noticed that YouTube and G Plus have split into two again? First, they get you used to it, and you you know the feed coming down, and and then they take it away. And when they brought it in, nobody wanted it. So I I don't understand what they're trying to do over at Google, but the Googleocracy is uh, firmly entrenched in power, and there's not a whole hell of a lot any of us can do about it. So we might as well sit back and enjoy the ride. I had this weird experience on YouTube, as I was saying. Now, those of you who have watched my videos for a while know that I love to plug other channels, put little ads up for people. Well, I encountered this one YouTuber who shall remain nameless. Uh, and there's so much suspicion these days. This fellow, who shall remain nameless, had some videos that were anti-nuke and attempted to, I guess, be a little creative with them. So I, being the person I am, I wrote a note to him and said, uh, would you mind if I used a couple of your clips? and push your channel a little bit. He freaked out on me. <laughs> He's like, no, it's my creative work and nobody can have it. Uh, uh. And, and then he blocked me. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's just the paranoia here. You, you sort of go out of your way and say, hey, I'll just put a little clip in mine and promote you. And there's so much of this jealousy and selfishness and narcissism on YouTube. He's going, I don't do my work so somebody else can put it on their channel. And okay, man, you don't want me to plug your channel? I won't. Uh, <laughs> your work isn't exactly Oscar worthy, shall we say? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, whatever, I, I wrote to the guy back and said, hey, whatever, okay, uh, nobody said no to my off offering that before, you're the first, but that's cool. Uh, to which he, you know, responded with this vitriol and blocked me. <laughs> Some people, man, they're so weird, they're so... And isn't that maybe what we're going through as a culture right now, is that sort of weirdness, that kind of... Uh, suspicion because we're all living in an insane world. Gandhi, what on earth are you doing? Get out of there. Gandhi, get out of there. Go. Well, if you're going to be a pain, go. Cats. 
I don't know why I, why I live with cats. But when they're sitting on your lap purring and you get that, you know, that, that cupboard love that they give you, you, we get sucked in every time by them. But that's what makes them interesting too. At least that's what I tell myself, so. Mm. Have another sip of my fair trade coffee. This will be a shout out to all the people, my people, the clan of conscience, the people that are out there. It's a very small clan, the clan of conscience, people of conscience. I love you guys. And you know who you are. I love you guys. The people that are producing content on YouTube, but more importantly, are actually committing themselves through their actions to show, to show the rest of the world around them that you can make a difference by the way you act based on conscience. Giovanna X said something interesting to me the other night uh, when I was making remarks about fascism that America has really been fascist for a long time. And I, I began to, to ponder that and realize that it's largely true. Uh, it began at the turn of the century, well, it began with Clinton, really. No, wait, before Clinton, it was Bush. No, wait, before Bush, it was, you know, it goes, goes on, goes far back, far back. A coup in slow motion, as Chris Hedges likes to say, and it's very true. We have elevated the insignificant and tiny into positions of great power uh, where, ha where we have allowed intellectual giants like Chomsky or uh, even Ralph Nader and, and ceded power to idiots because it's turning into a, an idiocracy. That was a great movie and it's so it's it's so true when the majority becomes less educated and Betsy DeVos will make sure that anybody not in a private school will be poorly poorly educated if at all uh, it's easier to manipulate there's an it's, there's a reason Herr Drumpf had said that he loves the uneducated because they're easy to fool they know nothing. They don't. There's no time for introspection with these people. Any time that would should be spent on perhaps introspection, learning, reading has been spent watching wrestling matches and monster trucks. So as a result, it's definitely becoming an idiocracy. We're so manipulated. And although we've known for a long time that we're manipulated all over the world by uh, banking cartels, by criminals, the earth is being controlled by the criminal class. And this is reality. This is the truth. Uh, if you uh, go back the last couple of decades, you could list the crimes of the various people. And the rap sheet is getting pretty damn long at people that are in the elite, in the power, in the upper echelons. They don't even have to be smart anymore. Just, just ruthless, that's all. If you're ruthless, you can succeed. This is what capitalism teaches. Uh, and communists? No. What about a nice middle ground, uh, social democracy where uh, controls are placed on, reasonable controls are placed on how much money and power you can acquire. Because when you get right down to it, it's no different. Uh, these billionaires are mentally ill people who just have to acquire, 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 acquire. They're like uh, somebody who is middle class and who lives in a nice house, but the inside is like they're, they're cluttered up to your waist with whatever. 
they're hoarders. And that's what these billionaires are. It's, it's sick. It's twisted. And who cares about how many numbers you have in a bank at some point? What, 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 is, the, what is the attraction? Power to impose your stupid will on somebody else. That's so important, isn't it? Because you are so superior to the rest of us. We're all just human beings struggling to make sense out of this play that we've been placed in since birth. It's all gonna play out. It's all, whatever is gonna happen is gonna happen. And, and it only takes a few idiots to spoil it for many, many people. And, and this is the problem, especially when idiots get even a little bit of power because the first thing they do is abuse it. How about, you know, the, the, the politicians always talk about deficits, deficits, deficits. It doesn't matter. I've been hearing this all my life. We got to cut back because we got to tighten our belts. We got to, they never do. They never tighten their belts. They just pass it on to the rest of us plebes. <sighs> what we really have is a compassion deficit, a humanity deficit. Some sort of morality. And I'm not talking about the kind of more false morality where I am holier than thou and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. What people want to do is cool until it hurts other people. And unfortunately, people get in positions of power and allow the narcissism to, the, the, the egotism to totally take them over. It's like Tolkien said in The Hobbit, you know? It's, it's dragon sickness, he called it. Wanting to acquire, constantly wanting to acquire more and more and more. Why do some of us not get it? And why do the ones who not get it allow this to happen? Because we're all responsible in some ways. We've all bought into this consumer culture. I don't care how you, you might live like a hermit out, out in the, the woods, but you, you're still partaking in the consumer culture. And we're always making decisions by what we decide to spend money on. Do we want shiny things or do we want to make our place a little better, uh, our, our emotional space a little better? It comes back to what's in your heart. Love and compassion or greed and narcissism. Those things cannot coexist. How do we find happiness in a situation where so much happy, unhappiness and suffering surrounds us? We seek after the wrong things in our society. We seek after money and status. And when you get to the end of your life, I think those things mean very, very little to you. Certainly, if you ask people on their deathbed what they regret, it isn't that I never bought that latest model of computer and I didn't, uh, I regret that I never had my Porsche and you know, my beach house. I don't think those things really matter because everything turns to dust. Everything crumbles. Everything turns to dust. Energy. Matter changes into energy. And it's too bad that more people couldn't have the wisdom that they find on their deathbed long before that so that we could make things better for each other. So I think what really makes humans happy is to help their fellow humans. It gives you a warm glow to know that you're able to alleviate some suffering in the world. This is what everybody should strive to do. 
We're certainly going to stumble. We're going to make mistakes. And selfishness always comes into it. Because we're all selfish in some way or another. Mother Teresa, I'm sure, was selfish, whatever. Schweitzer was selfish in some ways. It doesn't mean we shouldn't strive to be much better, you know, much better people, much better friends to each other. There's so much of a divide between people. There's religion, there's class, there's gender, there's a million things that can be used to divide people. But dividing people only seeks to increase the power of the kleptocrats, of those who seek to control others. And I saw some talking head on TV saying how normally after an American election, by this time everybody's settling down and calming down. And, but this time is different because really I believe that America is on the verge of not only a civil war, but a world war. I think we're all going to be incinerated because of greed, because of stupidity, because of the idiocracy that we find ourselves in. You know, we went, even on the internet, my very good friends on the internet, and you know who you are. Hi Scarlett, hi Ella, hi Glenn, hi, <laughs> hi Tom. You guys rock my world because I, you give me hope. And, and we're all diverse and very different people. We have different skills, we have um, different interests, uh, we live in different places. But what connects us is basic human decency. And this is something we need much more of. And there's so much defensiveness. The more evil that is done, be it on an institutional level or a personal level, the less people trust. The less people trust, the more evil is done. It's a vicious circle that can only end in destruction. But what do I know? I'm just an old hippie. Looking back on, on life and trying to make some sense of it, some sense of everything that's happened, of everything I've experienced. But it's very hard to make any sense when you're living in a nonsensical world, in the idiocracy. We are all trapped. And the only way out is together, to help each other out of these pits that are being dug for us constantly. None of us individually can do very much, but collectively, that's where the power lies. Because it's still my belief that the vast majority of humanity are decent people. All it takes is a few idiots. So the decent people have uh, abdicated their responsibility by not putting controls on those who would exploit, who would hurt, who would use. So I don't know how many more of these I'm going to put up. I do get a lot of gratification from the comments and the nice words. And, and you know, even the trolls, I can handle them. It's interesting, but it's, it's, it's connection. Can, can pixels and digits be a, a human connection? Partially, I think they can. That's why it's so important to keep an internet that is, well, 
open and becoming increasingly less open as we go along. So we need to learn skills, human skills, talk to each other again, smile at each other. That's the only thing that can make us happy, really, in the end anyway. It doesn't seem like it sometimes. But it's the truth. Have a good week, everybody. Stay safe. Let's all do something for somebody else this week, if we can. Vegematic signing off. You guys mean a lot to me. Thank you. Thanks a lot, all of you. There's certain names that I see. I, I, I could could write a list of all the people I know on here. Annette Cleary. There's somebody I haven't mentioned. <laughs> wonderful person. These are wonderful people. Good-hearted people. And that's what I try and do here is just connect with some other people who are good-hearted. And there are many, many good-hearted people. So don't despair. It's still a beautiful world.